Welcome back to How to Connect with Humans. This is Series 5 and Episode 8. Hello, Wayne. How are you? Hello, how are you? I am good. Good. Are you excited? I am. I am so excited. I could like, like I could go with my wings like that, like a, <laughs> like a wise owl. I would like to be. So, <laughs> and if that gives you a clue, we have somebody that we respect, we love, we admire, we we think she's so wonderful, and and her presence already is just like sunshine coming through the screen. So. Um, we had one of the originals, as we call them. It's like the superheroes. It's like the originals. <laughs> so um, we had Krista Kamsel with us. Yeah. And uh, Krista has been a teacher for a long time and she loves teaching. And uh, But she didn't stop there. She went on to teach other teachers. And, and she came across uh, the three principles understanding as uncovered by Sydney Banks in 1975. And then he met Sydney Banks in 1976. And since then, she has uh, not stopped uh, and, uh, and created a beautiful um, guide for schools for all levels called My Guide Inside, uh, which is a comprehensive curriculum and helps people and kids and teachers work from the understanding that she uncovered herself as well. So, um, Krista, it's such a pleasure. Welcome and hello. Hello. Um, that was wonderful. In a nutshell, you've um, encapsulated my life. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for inviting me. And um, I love the name of this series. And um, as you know, I've listened to um, some of the previous recordings and really enjoyed them. And um, it's interesting to me how to connect with humans. That was exactly the question I was asking myself back in the mid 70s when I was at the University of British Columbia in their education program. And no one knew at the time really the answer to this. And so um, I figured out that there must be something wrong with me. I must have some deficit, it's my problem. And so I decided to um, maybe rethink my career and I took a year off and I went to Europe and I studied and traveled and worked a little bit, had a wonderful time. A year later, I came back to Vancouver to determine if I would continue in the program or not. One last chance. And um, during the summer, I got an invitation to, um, to, from my friend from high school, Bob Campsell, um, to visit him on one of the nearby Gulf Islands where he had a, a nice summer job. So um, I hopped on the ferry and went to visit him. And it was interesting in the year away, we had gone such different ways on the, on the outside. Um, you know, being I was in Europe, I was a little, came back a little bit more formal. And in the year away, um, he like many, many young people in the day in North America were, um, was really searching. And he was even thinking of joining some new age group. And um, I thought, wow, that's not for me. I'm not a joiner or a follower. And um, it's funny how certain memories stick in your mind. I remember kind of on the, after that visit, um, kind of leaning on the, on the rails of the ferry, looking out and thinking, wow, that's the end of that friendship. We're, both, we're going in such different ways. And I thought, I better check out who's on campus and find some new friends. <laughs> but um, during that summer, um, as luck would have it, Bob was neighbors with Chip and Jan Chipman. And Bob and Chip had much in common. They were both kind of on a, a, a search for um, a spiritual search, a search for meaning. And um, they would often converse in the summer evenings. And 
At one point, Bob noticed a profound change in his neighbor and now friend, Chip. And Chip was uh, relating that he'd met this um, enlightened man, a man who'd had this experience, and his name was Sidney Banks. And Bob could see the profound change in Chip and was really intrigued. Chip said, um, Sid is holding his first public talk on Salt Spring Island, which was nearby, just a short ferry ride away. Why don't you go? And indeed, Bob went to Salt Spring Island to hear Sid and um, was profoundly moved. He really heard some of the words I, he tells me he'd heard before and he'd read them before, but he really heard the feeling that Sid was imparting. And he knew in his heart that his search was over and that the answers were within. So um, as Bob tells it, even the next day, he was like, the feeling was still with him. It was so strong. And he determined that he should he would come over to Vancouver and tell me, his friend, um, about this. So you can imagine my surprise when Bob shows up at my door in Vancouver and, um, and says, uh, hi, I found the secret to life. I'm like, oh, really? OK. And um, of course, invited him in. And what he'd heard from Sid were two things. I still remember to this day, it's like close to, um, you know, almost over 45 years ago. But I remember him saying what he heard from Sid was happiness lies within. And I thought, oh, that, I like that. I, that resonates. I'd always wanted to be happy and I was tried to be optimistic it was hit and miss but I really liked that and then also he said thought creates reality and as we were talking earlier uh Carolina and Wayne that's when my argument started I'm like no 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 that's wrong um circumstance creates my reality and that's a fact that's just the way it is but but despite that Bob did, um, I did hear the feeling. Bob brought a feeling with him and it was a new feeling and I loved the feeling. So um, we, as young people do, we philosophized for a few days and then Bob left Vancouver off to a, another job or whatever. And I stayed, of course, I was at, enrolled in university. And what happened was why, who knows why? Was it my age? Was it my inclination. I, I don't know why. Was it because I was a student and in a learning mode? It doesn't really, really matter why. But the outcome was that I just naturally started to look at the logic and see that indeed, my thoughts in the moment were directly relating to my perception of reality. And whether it was positive or negative or neutral, there was a definite logical correlation there and what happened was I just naturally let go of a lot of negative thinking and the result of that of course is that you have space you have a clear mind beautiful I was very happy um I started my um long-term teaching practicum a, a week or so later and this, my, the class I was assigned to was with um, kids who are 13, 14, 15, something like that. And my heart's desire, as I was saying, was um, really to connect with students who were struggling. Sometimes it looks like they're acting out and they're super belligerent. Other times it looks like the head down and disconnected and aren't communicating. But my heart's desire was to connect with learners who were struggling. And to my amazement and delight, it was all of a sudden I could connect with these students. And what, what is that? When I look back, I think it, it had to do with having a clear mind and being present and really seeing 
the learner in front of me and really from that seeing, knowing what to do or say or communicate. And um, without any intellectual effort, all of a sudden it became, to my surprise, not only my heart's desire was fulfilled, but it became a bit of a specialty in a sense. And the professors who had to, you know, observe me and um, write reports on me indeed documented that it was uh, a specialty that I could connect with these struggling learners. I was so happy and, um, and determined that yes, I would continue with my program to become a, a teacher. Um, about, I wanna say just a little bit more and then we'll see if there's any comments, but about, and at this time, trust me, we had, we had nothing. We're talking about the beauty of recordings. We certainly didn't have any recordings or anything. It was just the feeling that was um, imparted and, and, and you know just ripple effect from Sid out and um, it was very strong and very beautiful. And it was new in the world. About um, six months later, um, Bob came back to Vancouver and he invited me to come to the Gulf Islands because um, Sid was giving a talk on the Gulf Islands. And um, I was very happy to accept and we talk about how to connect with humans. And Sid was amazing at connecting with humans. I was so moved listening to his talk. It was so powerful to me. And it really brought alive the beautiful things that I'd learned throughout my life. His ability to connect was just stellar. Um, after the talk, um, I went up to Sid to ask him um, kind of, a, I was kind of making up an intellectual question to ask him and, um, and I, I connected with him, his eyes and mine connected for a few seconds, whatever. And the funniest thing that the question just kind of dissolved or disappeared, washed, washed away. And in its place was this even deeper feeling. To put words to that, it was an insight that really what I was after was um, connecting with wisdom within. It wasn't about chasing the intellect. And this was, a, a, again, another profound um, point in my life where I, I deepened that understanding. And when I went back to um, university, now I'm doing my own studies my own courses, I'm not in the practicum anymore. And it's so ironic as I took the focus off the intellect and became more intrigued with wisdom within, actually my studies improved. It's quite ironic. And it was just that joy and the confidence that you have when you're um, synchronizing your wisdom and your intellect that really um, serves, serves you well. So, um, those are some of the things um, about when I first heard about the three principles. And indeed, I did become a certified um, teacher for kindergarten through grade 12 in 1977. And then I upgraded um, with a master's of arts degree. And then I upgraded again with a diploma in special education to serve um, students and families of students with um, special needs designations. So I, I consider myself very fortunate that throughout my entire career, I've had this foundation of a, a little bit of um, understanding. Um, believe me, I'm a lifelong learner and though I'm only barely scratching the surface, but having that nonetheless as a foundation for my work and also for um, our marriage, Bob and I have been married um, 44 years and also for raising our sons who are in their 40s and, and now um, helping with grandparenting um, their children. So um, I'll just pause there. Um, 
And just, again, I just love your question. Isn't that funny that I had that same question in 1975? It was a burning question then. It's still um, obviously a relevant question now, all these years later. <laughs> yeah, oh, how beautiful. Uh, we, well, the way this was created was because, um, when the, pan the first pandemic quarantine here started in 2020, this is now um, June 2021 to put people in perspective. Um, so here in England and well, the rest of the world, everything came to uh, a stop sort of thing. And, um, and one, of, one of the main concerns were that there were a lot of people were alone. They were living alone. And, um, and 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 uh, not just here, like around the world, and they couldn't see their families. Like my family's in Argentina, so now it's been more than two years that we haven't been able to go and yeah. see them. And um, and uh, even even people that were with special needs or or you know elderly people, and and they wouldn't have just the normal conversation that they would have in with, with a going to the shop or or with a neighbor or anything like it because we weren't allowed to you know for for safety reasons obviously and um and we wanted to do something to help we wanted to do something to help and we didn't know what and i remember i woke up one day with this how to connect with humans in my head and uh and i said to wayne there's, we're going to do something with this. Something is going to, we're going to do something. And um, so maybe, maybe we talked and, and I, you know, people that have seen the series know that we, we thought, well, maybe if we get the courage to ask Chip and Jan Chipman to do one talk, that would be great. That's it. And um and so we did. And they were like, yeah, of course we will. Like, we'd love to. And um so Bob was so right, you know, to to feel that feeling from Chip <laughs> because they're like, yeah, of course. Um, and and then the, the rest is history. Right. And uh, so and then we asked other people and people have been, as you, as you, Krista, so welcoming. And, and they just said, yes, of course. And what we thought it was going to be one talk. Now it's been every week for a year. Oh, so geez. this celebrates a year of uh, bringing people together. Um, and uh, but so that's how this started. And and the other thing was we thought, well, we're all in our houses in a way. So how simple is that in the same way that sit started talking to neighbors and friends we'll just invite people to a living room and share what we now helped us change our life and also honored what um what seed found and then had this incredible love to go and share it with other people that this this incredible caring serving will of going and, and sharing it because he could have lived a very happy life and not have to bother <laughs> using the rest of his life going around doing this um and what i like is like uh when when we when we hear him say or we, we read it you know on his books about um going around the world and just tapping people on the shoulder and waking them up to to what they already we all have already and as and as a teacher I, i've been a teacher for a long time as well and um and i love your owl and i love that you 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 are an, an, an awaker you <laughs> you just go and 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 you know and get curious and see how you you pass on that they have so much in them to and that's what I see. What what I'm really fascinated as well is that when 
I know that when we learned about this, mm. one of the first things after that was, okay, I really want to share this. And for years we were like, <laughs> right? So, you know, but because it's not in the words, you mm. sometimes it takes some time to, now, Krista heard about it from a feeling. She didn't even mm. have a video. Yeah. And then she just went into sharing from that feeling and not only that then you you did something that I find really fascinating you put it into form into a, a curriculum for people to learn which um, I'm really curious about you know that process and and uh, and I can't imagine that Sid was probably quite curious about that was he? <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. Um, I, I just want to highlight what you're saying, how Sid um, would amplify this for all of us back in the day when we hung out about being ordinary and enjoying your home and your family. You know, back in the day, and still true now, people just want to be special and different and all that. And he's like, actually, the magic in the 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 you know, the gold, so to speak, in life is in being ordinary. And then as we, we um, settled into that beautiful feeling of just being ordinary, guess what? That's where you find the special magic that you were looking for. So I just wanted to say that how um, Sid would always amplify being ordinary to us. But yes, um, Sid was very supportive. The first curriculum, um, was written by a, a young man in Florida in early 1990s. And, um, and then I became a co-author of that. He was more of a counselor and I was a classroom teacher. So I expanded what he wrote so that it could be used in any classroom. And we had, um, a, you know, I contacted Sid and we put a few um, of his quotes in there and it was very powerful. It was, it was awesome. And then, in uh, 2005, I was doing my master's degree and um, my uh, thesis was around the three principles and students and common sense. And it was in service to the dis school district goals. And so I looked back at what we'd written in 1990 and I was thrilled to see, wow, society has moved, we've evolved. And of course, the truth is the truth, but some of the concepts no longer needed to be articulated in the same way. And Sid was very supportive of my um, work at that time. And I, I worked with his, I was honored to work with his grandchildren, were some of my students. And um, again, some of his quotes were put into the curriculum. And then, because um, Sid loved kids, to see him with kids of any age, it, it was just amazing. He would do things like come and visit us. And then he would invite our little sons out for dinner. And he'd take the two little boys out for dinner and things like that. And he, you know, he would be secret Santa at the school, just, just loved, loved children and knew that, of course, as, as many of us know, that that's where the future lies. That's where the hope lies. And um, so he was very supportive of um, the work I did as a school teacher and also of the um, curriculum. So it's a, bit, it's a bit interesting because you're absolutely right, Carolina, it's about the feeling, it's beyond the words. But obviously Sid wrote books and we, we live in the world of form, but the idea we have with the curriculum, I'll just show you the cover for the little kids, it's so cute. I hired my former student to, um, create this graphic and then for the middle school children um, for the teenagers and then we did one for um, three to five year olds a little picture book and um, so of course you need some form but our idea and we explain this very well in the teacher's manual is that it's a framework 
And in that framework, there's room to breathe air in. So you breathe in your own life and you're, you use the words that are meaningful to you and your learners. You bring it alive as the teacher. And um, we're really, you know, because you're like, well, it's about the feeling. Do we write a, a curriculum or not? And then I determined it would be valuable. And I determined, I, I, I imagined a scenario. Imagine a teenager having this book in their um, English course or health course or career course. And maybe the, the teacher doesn't feel um, that well that day. But what's to stop the kid from reading the truth themselves and having an insight? So. Um, Thank you for that. We really are uh, thrilled to have written the curriculum to honor the three principles as discovered and taught by Sydney Banks, as well as doing all the rigor and the homework to align it with educational goals and objectives so that it can be used for school credit during an, a regular school day. It's not a special program. It can be just integrated into um, a regular program. And we're finding, I'll just say one more thing about it, <clears throat> which is um, fabulous, is that um, we're now starting multiple translations. And around the world, we're finding that it's all story based. We're finding that these stories resonate with all these various cultures. And when they do the translations, they just change the names to be more culturally common. But the stories are universal. So um, it's been a real pleasure to, um, to have created these materials with my small team of really devoted people, Kathy Marshall Emerson out of the US, who actually, that's where I learned that there was teachers were interested and Jane Tucker, who um, lives here on Salt Spring. Wow, it's so, it's so beautiful because um, once, once you start sort of getting more of the feeling and understanding what Sue was talking about, and and then soon either the person who is sort of you know bringing you this understanding for you to learn it or or, or as soon as you start seeing children are so close to it like they, they have so much less you know thinking in their way to be able to wake up to this and um and I remember a few times talking to my daughter and um, I, me, I, I, I did a, um, I specialize in, in, in teaching adults. And at some point uh, um, I actually left formal education because I was fed up with the amount of paperwork and uh, I really wanted to teach. And I realized I have turned into this, you know, <laughs> sort of a really tired, burnt out person in front of, the computer and just uh, write in tons and tons of things that it, it didn't make sense to me and uh sometimes like my daughter was like oh because my teacher today was like this or like that or whatever she doesn't like me and I'm like well not sure she has that much time to not like you you know <laughs> but um I said well you know like the power of just looking at a teacher that has devoted her life to something she or he are very passionate about and and every day they they have to fill in a lot of paperwork and and uh and they come into these classes that probably <laughs> being you know the 14s and 15s you were talking about they're just looking like mm, they're in a mood they don't they're not interested they don't making eye contact they're not right mm -hmm. the power of just looking back at that human being and getting curious about you know what the day is like or or whether 
they are really tired or they're feeling a bit overwhelmed about trying to teach something they really love and they feel that they're not heard or appreciated or you know and um and I remember one day she said like well mom I'm surprised because I thought this teacher didn't like me and she came in and I just looked at her because she's very she thinks she's very shy (laughs) and um and I looked at her and then by the end of the class she came and said I really love your work and um And you are you you work so hard and it's really nice. And she had a smile in her face. I said, well, that's you know, human beings, human human beings on, on all sides, like they're not different. Right. They have they have kids or they don't, or they feel lonely, or they 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 want some connection. That's all it takes. You you know, so as you were saying. A kid could read one of your books. It will be there planting a seed. And that, that kid could well wake up to look at the teacher in the classroom. Yes. And change the world because that teacher reconnects or, you know, feels it's in a good feeling. Yeah. There's a possibility yeah, it's, a whole class, right? It's a circle. Yeah. It's a circle. We give to the kids, the kids give to us. Absolutely. Uh, uh, when a teacher gets a smile or something like from your daughter, that's like, that's like a golden gift for a teacher when a, when a student is connecting. So it, it, you're absolutely right. We're all human beings and we really um, help each other to, to lift up. Yeah. I was thinking of, um, you know, with your beautiful question in it, and I was thinking um, of a a student. um, This was like way back, my first teaching assignment before we had books or anything to, to really share. And this boy, I still remember him so clearly. So he was, um, when I met him, really belligerent and acting out and creating havoc and it was quite a chaotic classroom (laughs) but um assignment that I got but just by connecting with this feeling that we're talking about this feeling that you know educate means to draw out and when you see the dignity in someone it draws it out of them because of course that's who we are and this boy was um he was adopted And then his parents um, were getting a divorce. So he was put in these foster homes and then he was acting very badly. And then he got put in these special foster homes for kids with bad behavior. And um, and then because his parents were getting divorced, he had to go um, and become um, what they call a ward of the government. And um, but during the fall, just by connecting and seeing the dignity in this child, he was 14, 15, really a youth, he began to experience his own well being. And I remember at the first report card time, which is usually November, the, the foster parents were like, what's going on here? He's not fighting us anymore. He's he's happily doing um, what he has to do at home to, you know, earn his uh, special time and so on. It was very structured um, foster home because of all the outrageous behavior. So, so simple. And then I still remember he um, had to go to court um, to become a ward of the government and he asked the social worker to come by, so touching, come by to the school on the way to the courthouse. He wanted to see me. And there he was, you know, kind of stiff and a little bit dressed up, a little bit of a suit, which was not normal. And I, 
who knows what I said to him, but the important thing, I still remember, this is close to 50 years, I still remember the connection of the feeling and, and just feeling optimistic for him and feeling compassion for him. And, um, and then, you know, time was, he only had a few minutes and then he had to go to the courthouse. And then the rest of the year, he gained in confidence, he gained in feeling his well being. And this, this is, this is, um, I really want to amplify this. Like, I'll say it was like the springtime, his his past was really poison for him. Before, before I met him, he was mad at the world and at everybody. It was just all wrong and bad. By the springtime, he brought in all these little photo albums and all these families, all these foster families that he'd been living with, you know, for just short times. And he would remember beautiful things about every one of them. I was so touched by this, but I'm here to say that that's the first time I saw that, but I saw it again and again and again as students are healed from a difficult past and connect with their dignity, they rewrite their past and they start remembering some beautiful things, some healthy things. And I know when we read Sid's books, he, um, he talks about that as well. And I'm here to say as a teacher, that's absolutely true. Isn't that beautiful? Um, for, for being in the care system, I love what you just said, Krista, because there was times where, like, as you were describing with, with this person that they, you know, hated life and everything. And as I said to you previously, I kind of, I kind of was brought up to kind of not, um, to kind of be told oh I'm no good at this I'm no good at that I you know I wouldn't be able to do anything and for me coming across this understanding as you say the feeling that I've now gained in myself with the help of Carolina with the help of everyone that has come into my life it's just it's so magical to kind of feel like you know what you can do anything you like you can be whoever you like and you can you're not defined by your past and i think that's what i've really just heard in what you just said you know yeah. who would have thought that wayne would be here today if i wasn't if i wasn't who i am Mm. if I was my past I wouldn't be here and I remember saying to Carolina if if I didn't have my disability if I didn't have my past I wouldn't be who I am today and so many people that I speak to are like oh well you know I wish I didn't have my past I didn't have this or, you know for me I'm thankful for it I'm thankful for everything I've been through in life That's so beautiful. It's hearing you say that it's, just, it's like, like you say, like magic, like someone has switched on the light. And when I think of all the facilitating you're doing, Wayne, and um, I'm sure some of those, um, some of the people you work with are young people and how, how helpful that is for yeah. someone to hear your calmness and love and to understand that, um, as you say, we you are Wayne you are not your disability you are you and you're not defined by your past that um that ripple effect of your story of your experience and I think that's so beautiful that when it's our experience people feel that 
and and you cannot deny it you know it's true and that really helps as we were saying maybe it was before the recording started carolina but we were talking about trust and uh, i think it was before the recording but then when when someone knows and they're sharing their true experience that trust begins to um deepen and and then that person the ripple effect is on their journey beautiful it's it's very moving because um uh liliana bellini here and susan marmot and um and luis scott scott they started a new project called uh the big simple and the big simple is about um bringing this understanding to to uh, young adults that have been through the, the, the foster care system or um, and hopefully also all the way um, af- down. Um, so they asked Wayne about uh, his experience and and Wayne got uh, obviously thinking about his past, he got a bit um, wobbly thinking about it. I know one of these um, beautiful simple days as you were saying you know just sitting down looking at the garden and and well and uh suddenly the the talk about how many how many houses and how many places and how many foster parents he had and and we got really moved about well they did all that like how much love is there in, in, in so many human beings to go and have this little kid that they have to organize their house around, they, their bathroom around, the, how to, uh, he would walk around or, or do this or that. Uh, you know, if they had stairs, it was complicated. If, and then probably they could only have him for a little period of time and then he had to go somewhere else. And, um, and suddenly, sorry, I'm really moved. And um, suddenly that memory in a way of you thinking, I never had like a place I could stay for a long time. And it was, it was a bitter memory. Mm. It turned into this amazing yeah. memory of, love and and feeling thankful and recognizing that all those people had put time aside and and all the effort of seeing that he was fed he was clothed he had a place to be um and you were loved yeah and before that there was there must have been six to eight foster placements I was in. And before that insight, I was always kind of like, oh, well, you know, they, it was kind of a means to, and then I didn't really enjoy it and all this. I, I didn't see that side of it, but it was only until I put it down on paper, as Carolina was saying, that I saw that. Wow. And as Carolina, it moved me. It it moved me to kind of to feel so much love for these people. Yeah. And some of them I don't even talk to anymore. But if I could, I'd say thank you. Yeah. Because yeah, the, there's <laughs> the last, I wouldn't say foster placement, but um when i was 16 i moved up to the west midlands just up from london um and um it was only supposed to be for a short time and it ended up being two years and it was with my my best friend's family oh and even now to this day i see them as family and they see me as family oh it's so refreshing to go up there and to feel so much love from them. It's just incredible. Um, and I always, I always send them a message every now and again and just thank them. Um, and they're like, you don't do anything anymore. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but 
you may uh, not be anything, but I know that you're there. If I need anything, you're there. And they're over 200 miles away. Yeah. But it doesn't matter to them. I could phone them up, I could send them a message, and they will literally either call me or they'll be, you know, on the motorway in the next in the next 10 minutes or so, you know, it's but to have that for me to, to have that that guide in my life and I didn't even realize it was a guide inside <laughs> to have that was just incredible I've always kind of believed that we're guided in some kind of way and it when I wrote that and when I when I've seen that it, it's more kind of it's the people in your life that guide you as well. There's, you're guided by wisdom, but I also kind of think you meet people and you're guided a certain way. Yeah. We share the same wisdom, don't we? So people in our lives express it in their way Absolutely. Um, for us, yeah. That's so powerful what you've just shared, Wayne. And I don't know how old you are, but um, more than 18. <laughs> so isn't that beautiful how years later you see something in a, in a new way and feel that a deeper gratitude for um, events that have happened. That's so beautiful. You must be really grateful that they asked you to, to share your experience for young people. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, when I first when I first was asked, I was kind of, I didn't say this to them, but I kind of backed away a little bit. I was a bit like, oh, I don't really want to go there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, it wasn't kind of a, a side I'd ever shared. Right. Um, and for me, it was, it was a side that I was like, hmm, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want this to be kind of another Paul Wayne story because for right. me it kind of felt like I had with my disability and you know sharing stories along those lines I was kind of like okay well you know there's there's enough of Paul Wayne and everything <laughs> but what I saw afterwards in the response I got from them when I shared that they were like this is powerful yeah and for me, it wasn't kind of an ego thing. It was more kind of just, and what they do, it, it, it's, it's sharing their, your experience of what you went through. So if somebody's going through something similar, it's kind of like a friend to talk to in a sense. But that, that's how I see it. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. Um, there is one thing that keeps popping into my mind at the moment and it may not be related but it's it's what you kind of said earlier Sid always said that don't listen to my words it's in the feeling and for me it's it keeps coming across like that at the moment especially in this call <laughs> like when you said about the feeling it was just yeah and I, th I think that's that's what I've been feeling like when I've been teaching and, you know, throughout all the things I've shared recently, it's it's been the feeling. You know, I when we first started this series a year ago, I wasn't kind of one that would share much, would I? And for me, I was always kind of like, oh, I don't really want to share and things. But the way I kind of get around that now is to kind of, well, if something hits me and there's a feeling there, then I'll share it. And yeah, it, it's, it's incredible to kind of just, just feel. Mm -hmm. Whereas before yeah. I would have just kind of, I would have kind of backed away from it and kind of, try to intellect things whereas now 
I don't have to. It's just... and I, I love what you're saying. And um, I love from my experience, um, for, and it's a common experience. I know that when we share, we open the door for more more learning and more depth of feeling for ourselves. It's such a beautiful way to live. Yeah. Should we open up for comments or questions or can we? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so please do. Oh, Claire, there you are. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Hi. Um, it struck me again, it's lovely to hear you speak, Krista. Um, so interesting here and so inspiring here in um, all the work you've done. Um, but, you know, just what everyone was saying then and, um, you know, about the feeling, even just that sentence, you, you're looking for a feeling. So I just remember when I first heard that, I suddenly thought something just struck me in that point. Thought, you're looking for a feeling. And then suddenly you're looking for it and you almost become aware of it. I don't know if other people felt that but um and also Krista what you said about um being ordinary that somehow that helps you relax isn't it your shoulders drop down yes you don't have to try you don't have to be the big big person or whatever you know you don't have to impress just it's simple and be ordinary and you know yeah absolutely Claire, um, isn't that uh, when you said that, I think my shoulders dropped a little bit more even, but I, I just love that too. And the uh, there's so much irony, isn't there? I think the uh, ironical thing about that is that when we are just at ease and at home in ourselves and just content and enjoying life, people, again, they, they pick up on that. Mm. And, and that's how we, we help those around us, whether it's personal or professional relationships. So it's, it's kind of like we get what maybe we were looking for yeah. <laughs> just by settling into um, that gratitude and contentment. And then just the joy of, I hear birds in your, in your house. Yeah, they're out. really loud. Mm. Yeah, they're enjoying the, the sound of the birds, for example. It's just so simple. That's beautiful. Krista, can I ask, um, you know, when you first um, devised your curriculum, how did you um, sort of, because you were a teacher, weren't you? Yes. I mean, did you bring it in as part of your job role or, or how, how, how did your colleagues, uh, how did they find it, you know, when you first sort of suggested bringing it into the school? Well, the, the new one um, I created upon retiring <laughs> it's a little hard to do both um but i did um i was fortunate there was a colleague in the school district who uh first of all i'll say the three principles work is very quiet i worked in the school system as a the head of the special ed department in the high school and uh, i have nothing to you know I'm, I'm just doing my work and I'm just being myself. I'm not promoting anything or trying to teach anybody anything. I'm just being respectful and doing my job. And it wasn't until retiring when you get those nice retirement cards that I really realized what I, what impact I had on my colleagues, which was, oh, oh, nice. But um, so I retired and then I wrote the curriculum and then we got a grant from the um, health authority. Um, they were looking at wellness in the community and they determined that yes, teachers have a role to play for wellness in the community. And so um, for one school year, I um, was funded to uh, work with teachers at, at various schools. And also there was money there for them to buy the curriculum. And also there was money there to um, speak with the parents at a parent evenings. And it was very well received. 
Oh, fantastic. But, but while I was working, no one knew that I had any interest in the three principles or anything like that. I did it very, um, of course, I used what I knew. And sometimes I would give a distressed parent um, the missing link or something like that. Or sometimes I would do a one-to-one -one with a student and I would use one of Sid's books. But it's always very, um, very quiet work. Because it is so hard not to say anything about it, isn't it? It's <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of. Well, you, you, it's again, it's about the feeling. So the words don't really matter. You go about your daily work, and I'm the, being a special education teacher. It, you know, there were challenges, absolutely, because uh, we're all about inclusion, and to have inclusion of students with special needs. Sometimes it's behavior, sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's developmental, intellectual. To have those students welcomed, that's, that's a job. And to be able to um, work with the teachers so that they have a real feeling for who's coming in and have um, a sense that I'm supporting them and I will support the student and the teacher and to welcome that student in to the um, regular classroom, that's, that's a big deal and it, and it worked. And you just have to kind of really um, listen respectfully to people so that you're able to um, help them feel, feel good and confident about accepting uh, students with special needs in the classroom. So again, it's about, we're back, Claire, where we started. Again, it's about the feeling mm -hmm. and a feeling of respect for the teachers. Obviously, if there's um, discontent or, you know, I don't want, I don't want, well, what is that based on? It's based on fear and the unknown. So you help, you help each teacher feel confident to accept a child with, uh, or a youth, I was at the high school. To, and then of course, by the end of the year um, or the semester, of course the classroom is enriched. Everyone is enriched by having um, inclusion, but it does start with that feeling and the feeling of respect, not just for the student with special needs, not just for their family, but also for my colleagues who are teaching the class. Yeah. It's funny how, it, you know, you talk around and then it gets back to, <laughs> mm. back to the, the initial point of simplicity, as Sid would say. Mm. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, um, well, as, as you heard before the recording, we love Claire so much. And um, Claire is yes. one of our, absolutely amazing nurses here in the uk like we, we Fabulous. we're gonna have to spend <laughs> the rest of our existence thinking them and um um but also i can i can you know I, we can hear her sometimes with that you know wanting to share it and not knowing how to or or feeling that the nhs which is like the, the body of health here it's you feel like, oh, the NHS doesn't want to know about this. Like the NHS was something, right? Like, we, we, we sort of make it up like, uh, but, but it's true that I understand because I, 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 I see what many sometimes of us feel that you, you would like to be able to offer something or share and, and they just dismiss yeah. you in a way, right? Um, yeah. But um, if, if it's a, uh, I mean, I don't think I can say anything better of what Krista said, but um, actually, you know, Bill Pettit, Dr. Bill Pettit, that we, we also, you know, had here and we love him so much. So now he's teaching doctors and, and psychiatrists and with my guide inside, um, telling them about what the trolls in Frozen, uh, in the Frozen movies say about, you know, they have become also a very important tool of teaching. And then the missing link, the light of the garden, there aren't any books or videos from Sid. So, um, so I guess um, my guide inside, she's not 
it doesn't necessarily apply to only schools. And, and I think what you're rightfully saying is that if somehow it starts getting through one of the systems, yeah. it starts getting through education. Yeah, we are the, we are the system. So, and I know it take it takes time, but then if you look at the big picture, fifty years is not a big time for new knowledge in the world. My my son is an ICU doctor, um, and um, his wife is an infectious disease doctor. So she's been very, very much called on to do radio shows and webinars because of COVID. And our other daughter-in-law is a registered nurse here. And our son is um, involved with a medical app. And um, they, I'll talk about my, my son and uh, daughter-in-law who went to a small town and started working as they're in their specialties and, and are having an effect on the team. They love their nurses. When we are there and it's one of, the, one of their kids' parties, the nurses and their kids are always there too. But you just start working with that circle around you and, and then having an effect. And then all of a sudden, other systems are like, what's going on? How is it that you're having this wonderful, successful team? How is it that you're able to um, keep your nurses and doctors and everybody else is losing them because of a bad vibe. <laughs> so um, I know Claire, it's it's um, it's so multifaceted. And I've believe me, I've gone up to the top of the government and talked to them about um, what we have to offer, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Um, you know, do this, do that." But um, it's kind of like we kind of go at it from all sides in mm -hmm. our daily work, and then sometimes. Um, someone from NHS here, we have, um, you know, the health authority, they take a notice and then and then the conversation starts or you're asked to write an article or something like that. Um, it, it, I think it all helps. I, I really do. I think it's and you, you never know who who's around the corner that's going to ask a question like uh, Wayne gets invited to write his story. Well, that came out of the blue. You know, it's just. Um, just to, that comfort. Oh, what comes to mind, Claire, is um, Sid saying about this work. Just rest with patience. It takes patience. Yeah, I think that's probably what I need to do, really, because um, I'm quite new to this. You know what I mean? I'm sort of maybe about a year now. I found the principles, but, um, but you know, when you find something so good, you do want to share it, don't you? So I can't help but slip out. And oh, probably, you know, you know. Oh, that's <laughs> about, and that's about, perfect, right? I think mm. that's perfect when you're inspired to share in some way um, to absolutely do that. And now I think Claire, you're in a really great position because if you share with someone and they're like. Well, yeah, is this just you? You can, well, actually check out whatever you want to say. Mm. Check out Dr. Pettit's website or yeah. soon he'll have a book that we can point to. And, um, and, then, and then someone, you know, can, can learn a little bit more. I, I think it's fabulous mm. when you're inspired to, to, to go for it, for sure. Yeah. But also to, to feel grateful and happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if it always required is patience, it's just also thinking that, um, well, you have patience every day. Yeah. It's a beautiful feeling. I, I have to tell you, this project with the books, it's a big project. And to have dreams this is how it's working um to have dreams of what it might become and then just enjoy my life and then oh somebody phones me or connects with me or whatever and they're and i'm like wow i was just i was just dreaming about that <laughs> and and it's kind of um it's a it's a big mystery and to just be open 
to what comes along is um, I, I'm really enjoying this um, journey of sharing the principles with children and youth and, and parents too. But it, it's really surprising to me. And the three principles community, there's so much trust. There's that word again, um, that people connect with me because Dr. Pettit's mentioned it or whatever. And, and then there's um, some goodwill and off we are with another project with beautiful people. Um, at the helm and you go wow this is uh, so I just keep dreaming <laughs> and then and then enjoy my life <laughs> so this time next year it'll be interesting what we have to say <laughs> what's <laughs> happened <laughs> I don't know if there's another question or um, something you would like to share well, we wait for that. I was just struck, but actually you said all you need is patience. That's what Sue used to say. All you need is patience. And well, in Spanish, actually, and I think it's probably probably the same origin for, for patient us. We call the people that are ill or waiting for the doctor or so there are people that are in waiting in that I, I'm, I'm gonna have to go see where this comes from you know what's the origin of the word why why do we call them patient as are they patiently waiting are they uh i don't know do you do you does anybody know like do you know Claire? the origin of it but if all you need is patience, like you have <laughs> the experts. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's different spellings. Yeah. Mm. You, you know, but I mean, apart from that, let's... In Spanish. I'm, go I'm Googling it. Yeah, go, go, go. go, go. <laughs> because I guess if it comes from Latin, in Spanish, is it basically comes from patience. Mm. It's somebody who is being patient. Yeah. So able, oh, able yes. to accept uh, is what I just looked up something and it was that uh, sounded yeah. good. Able to accept. Able or tolerate to accept. delays. Yeah. 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 Because it's not my timeline. There's a bigger timeline involved. So to be able to, um, obviously I'm, I'm a teacher and I'm organized and, you know, but it's not my personal timeline. There's something bigger going on. Sid would often talk about there's something bigger going on and it's, it's a mystery. That's really have, reassuring as well, isn't it, Chris? It, it is reassuring. You know, because it, yeah. you know, because I think we think that we're in control all the time, don't we? And we have to work really hard at it. No, we yeah. don't. No. We're, we're like little, you know, grains of sand in the desert. Yeah. And you know. Yeah. What will be will be. Yeah. Yeah. And what can one seed do again? Isn't it? <laughs> when you look, one little we, single little seed can <laughs> I just think of when we think of Sid's story of how he had this amazing experience out of the blue an ordinary working person and then it was months literally months before the next human being got a feeling or, or for what he was saying isn't that amazing that this came out of his one experience. And as you were saying before, Carolina, his willingness to, to want to share with others. How and brave. that's how it still mm. is happening today from one soul mm. to another. And there's, there's no other way. That's amazing because it must have been it, so, it, it wasn't easy. You know, it can't have been easy for him. No. And, you know, how generous is that? It's, it's, and, to and quit Claire, your job I, and <laughs> yes. amazing 
and he didn't know what would resonate with people. Claire, I heard stories of he would pitch uh, when he picked, we, we, we were on a small island and so there's hitchhiking still uh, was common. And he'd pick up hitchhikers and he'd just start talking to them and see what resonated. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, or talk to people on the ferry and just kind of make friends and just kind of, what what do people want to hear? What makes sense? Wow, and I suppose he had, Sorry, Chris, I didn't mean to uh, no, interrupt. No, no, go ahead. No, no, um, go ahead. I suppose he had such a certainty. Yes. And that's how he was able to do that, you know. Yeah. No sort of like seeds of doubt or insecurity about, oh, how shall I do it? He just did it. He just explored. Yeah, yeah, explored it. Isn't that, I, I just love yeah. hearing, because, um, of course, I met him in 19, early 1976, which was two, three years later, by then he had, um, he'd been speaking to people. And by then, you know, at first it was his wife and then one friend and then the next friend, but for months he was alone with this incredible experience wanting to share it. Yeah. Wow. And, and look what he's done when you think of, um, of course, thank you, thank you technology. The, his generosity in writing the books in recording the videos and recording the audios and um and now how it's you know i was on a call last week and there were people from nigeria and um australia and um pakistan and morocco and canada and we're all talking together about the essence of the three principles and what sid discovered it's kind of exciting. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And I remember hearing him say, um, like he lost most of, most of his friends. <laughs> and and Elsie and her husband were like very touch and go. It's like, well, yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it wasn't like, but I, I guess he saw it. With, it was so clear. It was like, he couldn't bat. He couldn't bat because it was just like, I don't know, going really far away, seeing that the planet was round and then coming back and then trying to not say it was round, to keep, you know, talking to people that were now playing. <laughs> I guess it was like impossible not to. Mm. And he couldn't bat. Um, so uh, and we have we have Marty here. I don't know if Marty would love to say something. Well, we love to hear from Marty. I don't know. Marty wants to. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I really love the work you're doing, Krista. I, I really think it's uh, you know as important as anything, really. And um, you know, there's such suffering in the world in many ways. And to give the kids a chance to experience their uh, purity, you know, is such a wonderful thing. And I think of some of the uh, kids that I've seen that are uh, children or parents that have heard truth. And I, and I see like, you know, a young kid have such a state of presence. It's just like, oh my God. And so, I mean, Sid said many years, many times, this is like a different kind of learning, eh? but really ultimately it's essential learning. It's absolutely essential. It, we really need really someday, sometime, I like what Chris has said, because I think people need to hear the fact that let's not look at this in five years or 10 years or 20 years. This could take a long time, but. But in all curriculum, there is this taking care of like your spiritual hygiene, your, your the basis of who and what you are. And this is what Krista is pointing to. And, uh, and I really love that. It's like, um, as you started at the beginning of the program, you said the kids are known as the hope. And, uh, and you know, and, and we all know this too. We love kids because they're so pure. That's like why we love them because we're looking at purity. 
and then the the adults are are you know without criticizing them get lost and then you see like and this is hard to see when once you open up and then there the adults are sharing their lostness with their kids and this is just inevitable and so on and it's not that they don't love they share love with their kids too and then Krista and her work is giving the kids a chance to explore their foundation in life, which gives them a resilience, which they need badly. So um, it's like hope. And, uh, and, you know, of course, being an early student of Sid, so I, you know, I can't express enough appreciation for, for this uh, unveiling or might call it this awakening that happened but i've seen it many times uh, that the children of the people who have heard truth like uh, they're so natural and they love being kids and they are they're sort of allowed to be kids there's no rush and like when we brought up our kids there's no rush let's just let the kids of course, the kids get off track, you're the parent, but boy. So I'm grateful for the work that you're doing, Krista, Krista, and for, of course, the teachings of Sidney Banks, and for, like, um, you know, the future, and the, the future is good in that sense. It's real. The progress that can be made is, uh, you know, that we're, we're not falling apart it's still there and the world is evolving there's no it might be slow it is slow not might be slow <laughs> it is slow. but when you know that you still going to as krista said have a you can have a great life yourself you don't have to suffer because the world is slow you know so i'm grateful for the call and the feelings and the sharing and and uh, Chris, I always wanted to uh, contact you, Krista, about this, about this work. Uh, and, 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 you know, frankly, other very, very beautiful people and deeply spiritual people have pointed the very same thing. Let's make sure the kids are okay. Yeah. And they know that they're not broken and they're beautiful people. Yeah. So it's, it's the way, you know. Anyways. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Marty. You see it so clearly. Marty, you see it so clearly. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Beautiful. Maggie, would you like to ask something or share something? Or that I could see your beautiful face, Marty? Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> It's okay if you don't want, um, but um, how how beautiful that also, you know, like Krista and Marty and and some of the people that actually went and paid attention to a bit with you know even how either ridiculous or or silly it sounded at the beginning and how. <sighs> You know, like George Bransky went to door to him and he was like, well, this guy doesn't know anything. I've been studying for so many years and come on. And he, he left in a, in a total, you know, in a total <laughs> mood. And he was with Lyndon, the car guy, like, this is so ridiculous. And I can't believe, well, and he, he couldn't let it go. He couldn't let it go. Um, and, and thank God he couldn't let it go, you know, and a year after, a year, I think, a year and a bit that mm. George had his uh, stroke after having uh, open heart surgery, it was a 3% chance that he would have a stroke and he has this, this massive stroke. <laughs> and then um, this, this, amazing again this amazing intellectual mind and and um it's you know his speech is like 
stopped in a way, has to learn to speak again. He, and you see Linda having that, being his carer. And they, they were offered to go into like a group of like other people. They were like, no, no, no. We don't want to sort of be in a, you know, in this like group of whatever that we are supposed to. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to get creative. We're going to. Um, so, yeah, it's true about the time. It doesn't matter if it's five years. It's how many 45, 50 years later they've been teaching this and it changed their lives so much. But we also think that because we have this understanding, we should be untouchable. Like George Pransky shouldn't have a stroke. And, you know, because he should be protected by some other whatever, you know, by wisdom. But that happens. And then Linda and him see something new and, and they share that and they walk that path with such love and dignity and patience <clears throat> patience oh my god um it's the resilience <laughs> yeah yeah i think maggie's got a hand up maggie yay <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've i've come back to life <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was <clears throat> you know just sort of bathing and listening to it all really but um Carolina, i know last time we spoke we were actually talking a little bit about uh, sleep and um although i know it's it's kind of not some not really the topic particularly of this um <laughs> thing but um yeah something has really shifted Do yeah well it's what's interesting is that I, you know sort of after years and years and years and we were talking about years and years and years it, it it might take for things to shift but the thing that has really spoken to me about it is a message of hope and that there is always always hope and um I was just, was just talking to a friend about about it a little while ago saying I I just feel that somehow or other this 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 sleep journey is a three principles journey. It's not about something else. Although there's something else, you know, there's something else. There are things sort of like it's sort of external things that people can do. Um, you know, I'm not saying there aren't sort of things that you can do, but in the end. Um, in the end, there was something that that I I knew there was still yet to see, and of course, you don't know what it is because you haven't seen it. <laughs> so you can't really plan for it, which is quite <laughs> neat, really. <laughs> I found that I I couldn't work out a solution. I couldn't work out something an intellectual way, which is often my way if I do have something that I kind of want to do or figure out then you know I I know that my one of my natural sort of ways to do it actually is is a, a thinking intellectual process it's often the way I do stuff but but with this particular thing I I I think it just shows how beautifully that I hadn't seen it till I'd seen it and I didn't know what it was that I was going to see. I just had this feeling that it that somehow it was it was to do with the principles, or or in some way or other. And um, what I just what I came to see was that I fell in love with life <sighs> at a at a level that was so much more than I'd seen before. I mean, again, I, I guess it is relevant because it's down to the feeling. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's really quite difficult to to explain. But I don't know, there was, there was something, there was a quality of spring around it that suddenly there was, I don't know, more colour, more hope, more optimism, more, more love, more space for things to occur. And... Um, it, it did, it, yeah, it felt like 
it felt like I was falling in love with life. And that was the feeling that I was getting over and over and over again. And um, there was something about a sort of, I don't know, a, another level or some, somewhere else to go with, with seeing joy and, and seeing optimism that, that sort of was more than just a concept, more than just a word. And um, my sleep has improved dramatically. Wow. Um, and, it, and even, um, you know, it's not, it's not maybe 100% every night I have a perfect night's sleep, but I'm not tortured by it in, a, mm. in the moment. And I, I was before, although often during the day things comes and go, but basically, you know, I'm pretty chilled with all this three-piece stuff. Life's quite a blast, really. You know, it's, it's full of so many good things and uh, just getting in the water and swimming and just so, so many things as sort of frolicking in the surf and being a bit of a dolphin and all this kind of thing. But that, that eluded me at night. And, um, but since somehow this awakening or this deeper level or this realisation, um, I'm not tortured by it at night now. So, you know, if... I'm awake, I'm, I'm content. Mm -hmm. And so in so many ways, problems are only problems when we think they are. Um. <laughs> um. Oh, Maggie, that is such a gift. Um, geez. Um, <laughs> because we, we can sit here and talk for, you know, forever. But... Um, what you've just shared that that speaks a thousand words or or it's exactly because it's not in the words is that that somebody sees hope falls in love with life and is not afraid of their own experience that's what you're saying that's what C yeah. told us that's all. That's it. That changes the world. So what you've just shared with us changes the world. Anybody that hears you say that can think, well, if Maggie saw it, then <laughs> that's available for me too. I'm listening to you that I still have issues falling asleep or, or sleeping. And I'm thinking, oh, right I mean I could have talked to you about sleeping but then you have the insight and now I'm going right Maggie's my teacher <laughs> yeah but it was the conversation we had last time I know it's months ago I don't even know when it was I think it was when Carol Burroughs was talking actually and I kind of asked her a question and then you you were sort of you know you revealed didn't you about and it, I think it is, it's, it is a sort of, I don't know, well, it is connecting with humans, isn't it? Every, everything that everybody says, touch, you know, touches, um, you know, even just looking, looking at you in the, on the screen, you and Wayne, it's just such a beautiful thing, you know, and, and it, it, it is a heart, it's a heart opening, a sort of heart opening yeah. experience that, you know, I've actually been, rather enjoy looking at the flower as well you know the flower on your wall yeah behind you yeah <laughs> me too it's so funny <laughs> you know I've, I've, I've actually been drawn been really drawn into that <laughs> that's so funny that's why my sleeping and probably what <laughs> you had experienced that was actually I wanted to do something else and then I got this canvas that was I, I got it second hand that had a, a, a like an imprint of a flower and I painted all white so I could have a white canvas but the flower kept came, coming back so it, it was <laughs> like I had to like <laughs> and that I took out of that wall a few times thinking mm. I don't like it I don't like the colors I'm not sure and it keeps creeping back into the wall <laughs> It just speaks to me of life. You know, yeah. when, I, when I see that, I saw that picture 
and I saw life. And I think that that was kind of the key. For one, I don't know, not the key. I mean, there are lots of keys, aren't there, I suppose. But um, yeah, I, I think I think I would just say that what I've come to see at a much deeper level is life. I love what you say, Maggie, about falling in love with life. And then you had all these amazing descriptors. I'll listen to the recording later, all your descriptors, but how it's it's a package that you get when you fall in love with life. So beautiful. And I'll have to say, I'm drawn into your picture behind you, Maggie. It makes me think of, of Europe. I just love it. Because of course, we're here in Canada. We don't have such beautiful stone walls, really. It's gorgeous. It's the Lake District. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. I love it. It yeah. has a real feeling of Europe and exotic feeling to it. <laughs> but I love what you're saying, Maggie, about, you know, it's like feeling uh, the, never mind what the problem is, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you know, fill in the blank, what, what's your issue, falling in love with life, um, with all those beautiful things that happen when you do, is um is that common solution it's so wonderful to hear thank you thank you <laughs> martin said common sense of truth is very wonderful and it is very wonderful um we are so lucky to Absolutely. we are so lucky to have you to have you all here like we are we really are um some may come in disguise as our speakers and teachers, and then others um, come and sneak through and, <laughs> and teach us something new. So, um, so uh, Krista, you've been so, so uh, lovely, wonderful, and, um, and, and you have given us so much time. Uh, thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, so I hope you had a good time. Very good. Thank you. I have a couple of quotes to end us off. Oh, yes, please. Um, so um, both from the missing link. All humans have the inner ability to synchronize their personal mind with their impersonal mind to bring harmony into their lives. And lastly, those who have found a balance between their intelligence and their innate wisdom are the lucky ones. <laughs> That's beautiful, thank you. And um, so here's the missing yes. link. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, the one from- That's where it's from, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the beautiful thing also is that it started to be translated in other languages, which for the first time so soon, as Crystal was saying, let's see what's going on in a year because it's a lot happening. Um, and, uh, and, and, and his videos are gonna start to be translated in other languages as well. Uh, he, um, so, so that's amazing. Uh, so thank you for for um, for so much love, Krista. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you for um, the invitation. Real we, we, pleasure. Yeah, we Real can pleasure. have Boss Bob if he will. Oh look, <laughs> even if you go like that, we have hearts. <laughs> we have kisses. Oh look, <laughs> um, Adam. So where can people find you? Um, if they want to contact you. Myguideinside.com has a contact box, dialogue box. Brilliant. Thank you. So we'll, we'll, yeah. put that, we'll put that underneath. And uh, if there's anything new or, or, or you want to come back at any point, you let us know. So uh, yes. because, uh, Thank we'll you. have you anytime. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, Thank you for all you do and everyone. It was so beautiful to meet you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next week, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Next week, uh, on Monday. So next week we're having two. So it's the end of the series. So we're going to have Monday and Wednesday. So um, usual time, Monday and Wednesday. We're going to have on Monday 
uh, Harry Thurvisky and Nikki Davinson. So Harry has also been one of our, uh, an, one of the early students of uh, Sydney Banks and, and also um, wants to talk about uh, the spiritual, this, I, I wrote it down so I can quote what he said a little bit better than what I'm saying. Um, so the spiritual nature of the principles uh, as encoded by Sydney Banks, which is what we talk about. But I think he's got also a, a particular way of, of viewing things yeah. uh, from um, being a native of uh, the place he is. And uh, so uh, I'm not going to say too much. So you get mm -hmm. curious and you come and hear that. And um, and we're going to finish this series with um, Christine Heath and Judith Sedgman talking about psychology has it backwards. So we have a lot of originals to, 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 to savor um, and talk about Sydney Banks. And um, so please join us. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And thank you, my love. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll thank see you. you soon. Thank you. Lots of love. Thank you. Lots of love. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>